All right, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back to another weekly edition of Stock Market Mutterings. This is for September 4th. That's right, summer is officially over. And they always say summer is a terrible time to trade. Sell in May and go away. Not, not, not this summer, man. Let me tell you, it was great trading all summer long. Most summers are good anyway. That's the problem. Don't we always talk about that every week? How all these slogans and all these sayings are just bullshit. Really? Aren't they just bullshit? They just get in your way of trying to make money. There's always opportunity going on in the market. You just got to know where to look. So, now that we're, we're sitting here, let's talk about September before I start talking about stocks. We're now winding down the year. So I know there's a lot of you out there and you're saying to yourself, look, I made all these goals in January. I said I was going to be this badass trader in January. I was going to be up all this money in January. I had a plan. Here I am. I'm winding down to the last few months of 2018 and I'm nowhere near that. So if you're sitting there and you're just sitting there going in this like, like a hamster on a wheel with your trading, you're not going anywhere. Just slow motion, like you're running in a dream or something. Visit the LincolnList.com. I say it every week I do these. Visit the LincolnList.com. Trade with us live. See if we have the educational content, the kind of format that can get you to that next level as a trader. Time is a running out if you're not there. And even if you're doing good and you want to do better and you want to align yourself with a trading community, a professional trading community, visit the LincolnList.com. So let's talk about this market because I'm not going to take credit for big gains this week to the long side because basically you could alley-oop darts at a board and you were pretty good. Now, that's not always because it could have landed on Tesla, and that would have been a bad thing. But for the most part, the market just kicked kicked it in high gear. It's been like that for about two weeks. It, it looked like, you know, we, we, we kind of talked about this a, a week or so ago. Down here off this pivot, we were talking about, hey, they're trying to press these tariffs. They had that meeting. We talked about it two weeks ago in the market mutterings. They didn't have the meeting. They said they were going to have the meeting. And quote, unquote, I'm doing this right now. You can't see my face. I'm doing air quotes. They said they're going to try to fix this whole tariff thing by November. That's all you needed to hear. I mean, the market just ramped up 10 more points on the spy, just relentless. And you saw all kinds of stocks just busting through all-time highs, just flying off the handle. Now, as we approach September, you know, we get after the summer, we get into the, after Labor Day, the question always is, we're going to get a sell-off. We're going to get a sell-off. One thing I want to tell you guys is that is not up to you, whether or not we get a sell-off. And nobody knows whether we're going to get one or not, because there's all been all kinds of signs for the last two or three years that this market was going to pull back. And every single time it finds one piece of news, clings on to it like it's the last thing on earth and finds a way to make a new high. Until that stops, then we're not really going to be talking about corrections. I mean, in February, March and April, we were looking at the 200 moving average. That's where we thought we could start talking about corrections. Didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. You can see it back here. Every time it touched down on this, this blue line, I got it to bottom teal. Every time it hit that, it just bounced right off of it routinely. And now you're just grinding up and grinding up. And now you've broken out over January's high. And, and that's that's where we are right now. So going forward here, if we do get a retracement, you're just going to walk yourself back down those lines. One thing you have to remember, though, is that the market never crashes from all time highs. Stocks don't crash from all time highs. So you're not going to wake up money. It'd be very rare. Something would d badly have to happen for you to wake up you know, Tuesday when the market opens again and see this thing completely cra crashed market halted and go into this tailspin. Not going to happen that way. It'll take some time. Even back in January, you know, you had a few, few selling days, a small base, and then you really got some heavy selling in there. So, you know, just kind of look at your moving averages. Uh, I got the 10 moving average here on the daily, which is 288.12, I think it is. 20 moving average, 286. You know, maybe if you get down into 285s or something like that, you might get a little bit more selling pressure. But I wouldn't expect that to just show up. Now, there might be some selling. Some of these valuations, some of these charts look absolutely ridiculous. I will agree. But it is what it is until it isn't. And that's what kills us as traders. When people say, why do they screw up? They screw up because of biases. They screw up because of being stubborn. They screw up because of fighting things that they know they shouldn't be fighting. And, does, you know, you just got to go with it right now. It is what it is. That's the market. If we continue to grind up, I would not be surprised to see 300 
I'm not saying that's what we're going to see, but I wouldn't be surprised to see 300 because once you start getting in the, if you get in the mid 290s there, that's what they're going to talk about. So smelling that 300, the emotional level, and maybe that's where we end up. Time shall tell, but let's look at stocks. Don't you guys want to look at, at some stocks here? How about we look at NVIDIA? I mean, this is just one of the billions of stocks that just seem to be drilling all-time highs after all-time high after. I mean, just again here on Friday, just relentless buying all the way up. And it closes back up on highs. Every single dip in this stock got bought. Now, I had thought there, well, I actually did try a short. It worked out pretty good. But it was so temporary. When I say that, it was like when these stocks got up and they were getting stretched and getting vertical, it, it you have to look at the short side sometimes. I mean, you got to look at this stuff and say it's extended. It's going to be that way. But what you can't be is you can't be stubborn with that short because this, like I mentioned just a minute ago, one of the things that kills us is our bias. It's okay to do a trade like that. It's okay to think that way, but you have to understand when you're kind of outnumbered. And right now with the market just clicking all-time highs, it makes that difficult. Now, we did pretty good with it. I think it was like 267 or something to 264. So it was a really good trade. But as soon as it hit 264, it ricocheted there. And look what I'm doing this now. It's 281. So, I mean, it's gone up another 10 bucks since that. I'm, pretty, I'm just recalling that from memory. I might be completely off. But... Anyway, what's the point? What's the point going forward? Look for levels on this. If it's going to continue to do what it has done, which is hold up spikes like this. Here you got Friday morning. You got a big old spike that goes vert. You got some sideways consolidation and then a new high. If it's going to continue to do that, then you've got to think this thing's got 300 in it. Now, if you're looking for the short, you, you know, when I do shorting, I do a lot different than most people. I like to short vertical parabolic moves that that have heavy euphoria on it. And it might just be a small, small piece. I don't know if you're going to, you, you still may get stuff like that out of this, this kind of a stock. If it goes vertical, like you wake up and it's already up 10 or $12, then I would definitely look to the short side. But don't rule out the market's going to continue to be strong. I don't know what it's going to be like next week. But if it's going to continue to be strong, look for this. Nonetheless, even though I don't have a handful of numbers and lines and pretty things to draw and tell you about this, just watch the stock because it's tradable every day. It's got something going on, whether it's long or short. Just look for your levels. Look for your setups. Look for these important numbers and certain levels to get taken out. And then that's where you do your buying or your, your selling. Now, another one here, let's say the market is relatively calm. Sideways action holds up pretty well. I'll tell you one thing I do like is Splunk. Unfortunately, I can't open up this daily chart for you down bottom. But you had a pretty good look. If you were following what I was talking about Friday on Twitter, I was like, this thing's going to break out over the highs here. It had this nice flag set up right here. And as soon as it broke out, you know, just it throws out one red fake bar, but spends the rest of the day just grinding it out, grinding it out. Now, at the time, volume was a little light, but it's, it got much better as the day wore on. But if you look at it here, I believe the high is 130. So you're 128.50 right here. I'd keep a close eye on that 130 level. If that 130 level goes, then I would think this thing spikes a little bit more. Now, this is a a play we've seen happen continually and to me has been probably since May the best play in the market and that is the gap up whether it's on news mainly it's been earnings the gap up on news or gap up on earnings hold on for a while like sideways for a few days and then rip you've seen stuff like that in like pay C which I'll talk about in just a little bit as well you know the earnings gapper rips for two days, goes sideways for about a week, and then it has this extra gear. And look at the size of this extra gear. And you saw that in something like DXCM as well. I mean, look at DXCM. Here's your earnings gap, sideways action, and rippage. So you, you might see something like that in Splunk. Although Splunk right here does not have the longer-term consolidation as of now. Maybe it does. But watch that 130. If 130 goes there, then we'll, we'll take a look at it. Now, I want to also look here at Wayfair. Wayfair. You know, Wayfair is starting to turn into a stock I talk a lot about and do nothing about because I keep, keep, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I have absolutely no idea. But this thing looks like it's ready to ramp up again. Nothing has been able to stop this thing. Now, I'm not a, a, a person that's a trader that sits there and analyzes earnings. That's not my wheelhouse. 
I just hear say things, and that's as far as I go. I don't read financial stuff. Anyway, it's if I can recall, which I may be wrong, and I'm willing to admit that, but they didn't do so hot with earnings. I know they beat, but I think they guided lower. There were some things in the earnings that wasn't so hot because it sold off going into it. And then when it does report earnings it just dumps down to this like nine it was way way down here you know down in this hundred level or so for something it was i was thinking 95 i had to pull up the chart there but since that moment this thing has done nothing but claw its way back so whatever the issue was then is not existent now because this thing just rolling and rolling and rolling and i don't know if it's like because that's just online retailers are just Everybody wants to own these things, but watch this one again. You're sitting, you're just parked right here at 136.20s, which is all-time highs. It looks like it's going to bust through that thing again. So this Wayfair, also strong. Now, I did mention Pay C at some point here. I mean, we're looking at even Apple, for God's sakes, Apple. I love Apple. I've owned Apple for a long time in my 401k. But this daily chart on Apple, too, is just, it's ignorant. I mean, look at, this is Ignorant, along with, you know, Pacey. I was going to say Splunk there, but let's go back to Pacey because that's what I was talking about. I mean, you got to start looking at some of this stuff for short setups. Now, again, that doesn't mean I'm just going to fire away short because it's up a lot. Remember, that's still something we don't want to do. Just because it's up a lot doesn't justify it being a short, but you have to start preparing for something like that because these moves are not... I hate to tell you, but they're not going to keep going like this for the rest of the year. You're just not going to just just not going to go like that. There's going to be pullbacks. There's going to be sideways actions. There's going to be fades in this, and there's going to be big opportunities to make money. I mean, some of these stocks are up 50, 60 percent in a very short period of time. I mean, it's been one hell of a bullish summer. So keep your eyes on these. Again, I don't want to pull out numbers on this stuff because, you know, if I say short at 160. Maybe it's a buy at 160 because maybe it flagged for a few days and then broke 160 and I changed my mind. For me, when I look for shorts, they have to be in most cases for me is a big, big rip. And I look for range, which is important to me. So let's say, like I mentioned NVIDIA at the beginning of this whole spiel, it has a daily range of about $8. You know, that's a, like on a good day, that thing rips 8 to 10 bucks. So if you start the day out and you're already up at 8 to $10 plus, and then you tack on a few dollars more, you're already consuming most of that range. Now, this is non-earnings -earn related. If it's something that's earnings related like Lulu today, that's a different story, up $25. But that's what I look for, and I look to, to, to short into that strength, and it works out pretty well for me that way. But if you want to do a bear flag shorting, you got to look for some lower highs, in some of this stuff or some air to come out maybe of the market anyway what I'm basically saying is a lot of this stuff is is up a lot doesn't mean we won't continue to go higher but we really have to start looking here at the other side of the equation it's like possibly seeing a fade in this market that doesn't mean we're going to go through a bearish cycle go through a crash or a collapse or an economic crisis or a recession but these just got a little hot over the last couple of weeks and you know we need to start thinking about maybe the other side of this trade or preparing for it if and when it happens. So anyway, I'm going to leave it like that. I mean, there's tons of stock charts that look like this. It's a day-by-day -day thing always with trading. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what's going to be thrown at you. You just have to be prepared for everything. If you need help with that, visit thelinkedinlist.com. Thanks for watching this week's Market Mutterings. As always, if you have questions, send them to me. Support at thelinkedinlist.com. Until next week, take care and trade well.